Christy. I know how it is backstage. Uh, I can hear every word. Lucinda, you're back there, and I heard you uh, tell us that you were from uh, Massachusetts. I want you all to thank her for voting last week. We may return to the two-party system. I know it's hard if you live in uh, Michigan or Minnesota or Montana or that wonderful climate we have at this time of the year to uh, come to sun, sunny San Antonio, but somebody's got to do the hard work. And uh, just a little advice I've learned over the years. Make sure you thank the folks back home that are doing your chores so you can be here. Uh, if you come from snow, they think this is a pretty plush job being at this convention, but you got a lot of work. But you make sure you thank them. Uh, uh, without folks back home, uh, we wouldn't be here. Let me say at the outset, I thoroughly enjoyed my uh, year as president of the National Cabinet's Beef Association. It's, it's been a true honor. I've gotten to know many of you uh, personally. Uh, I've been invited into your homes and uh, into your states. I tell you, the whole country is full of wonderful people. The whole country. Uh, to a person, everyone was uh, very nice and supportive to me as I represented you. So I had a great time uh, representing you amazingly. I racked up about 200,000 miles in the United States airport system. Um, got on about 120 planes. I know how to fasten a seatbelt by now. Uh, slept in 110 different beds along the way. And I just want to report I've treasured every minute of it, except maybe the time I got food poisoned in the Chicago airport, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> it comes with a job, I guess. I think if you know me at all, you know that I'm a forward-looking kind of guy, and I want to just tell you we got a lot of work ahead of us this week. First of all, this meeting is a big responsibility. We're here representing all of our neighbors and fellow cattlemen back home. And what we accomplish here this week is going to be on, first of all, on behalf of the 30,000 some members of NCBA. We here are going to accomplish things on behalf of those 30,000. We're also going to be accomplishing things on behalf of the 150,000 cattlemen that belong to their state cattlemen's organization. We're carrying their water, and at the end of the week, we're also working for the 750,000 that pay the beef checkoff every time they sell an animal. So we've got an amazing uh, responsibility, uh, and we are representing a lot of people. So it's important what we do here. Here's another amazing fact. We've got a near record turnout at this convention. We're closing in on 5,700 people up here. Uh, most since the last time we were in San Antonio, and you know, lots changed in the business since then. What does that say? I mean, maybe we'll sneak up to 6,000. It says to me, this is an important time in the beef industry, and you know it. And it's also going to be a history-making time for your trade association and CBA. As we uh, go to work tomorrow, I'm asking you today to get two big things done this week. First of all, it's the committee work. I can't stress that enough. Get your visiting done in the next couple days in the hallway after uh, the nights are over in the morning. But when it comes Friday, head straight to your committee work and get the work done. We need you, the beef industry, has changed in the last 12 months since we've been in Phoenix, Arizona. Our business and our life and our way of life is under attack. Beef demand has dropped back to the 1998 levels where it was the lowest it had been in about 25 years. Demand for beef is off globally. 
And of course, we got a lousy economy to uh, thank for that, and we're not in charge of that, so we're not going to be working on the economy this week. We're getting ready for when the economy turns around. Beef demand demands, beef demand, I know that's a word we use, you know, we have to increase beef demand. Beef demand is what generates profit. And profit's what's necessary for all parts of the industry to survive. So, whatever work we do uh, about the checkoff this week, it has never been more important. Another committee uh, job next week is going to be very important is the membership committee. If you're on that, I'm expecting a good report on Saturday morning, so if you're on that, please be there and participate. The other thing that's changed uh, in the last 12 months is uh, politically. Many politicians don't seem to remember where food comes from. Seems to me some of them don't even care. It's not important where food comes from. They seem to be bent on regulating us out of business. Our committees this week are going to be addressing that problem as we work toward a unified plan to make the business profitable and sustainable again. So I charge you the buck stops with you and get after that. Uh, represent, uh, remember you represent a lot of people back home. The other item I'm asking you uh, for help on, particularly if you're on the NCBA Board of Directors, uh, and there's 274 of you, I'm asking you to support the Governance Task Force report. You've heard a lot about it. It's going to be discussed this week. Pay attention. I know you still have questions, but I'm, I'm confident uh, uh, as uh, you hear the explanations of where we are with that report, uh, you're going to come to embrace it. I was, I've been here since before the merger, and I'm beef Federation guy from the State Beef Council of Michigan. I'm telling you, this is going to be the time to consummate the marriage of the Beef Industry Council and the, the old NCBA. This is going to be the week. Instead of two houses that were brought together, we must live in one house if we're going to be successful and ensure a, a future for this industry. The issues we face are too complex and too dire not to address them as one house. The checkoff's job of which uh, NCBA is a proud contractor to the beef checkoff is to increase profit to increase beef demand. Policy's job is to make sure the government doesn't take that profit away through over-regulation, over-legislation, over-taxation. That's what the things we're about. And as beef producers, we have a vital stake in both activities. We have a common interest. It's not a conflict of interest. We have a common interest to move the industry forward. Now, don't get me wrong. We have to be single-minded about solutions to these tough challenges, but we also have to keep our accounting straight. What we have today and what we will continue to have in the future is a firewall, a firewall on how we pay for stuff. That firewall is as solid as it's ever been. That, that firewall makes sure checkoff pays for demand building and demand protecting efforts in our dues pay for association lobbying. The fact is after Many years of third-party audits, NCBA has never, ever broken that firewall, and we don't ever intend.